Welcome to video 12 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. This video's topic will be the HSS toolpath, uh, specifically the full HSS toolpath that's available from the, um, the 3D Pro and 3D Standard packages from SolidCAM. Um, the reason we differentiate those is because all packages from SolidCAM include what we call the HSS Express, which was the toolpath I covered in video 11. So I'll refer you to that to see how the Parallel Cuts Linear and Parallel Cuts Constant Z toolpaths from HSS operate. So we'll continue from those. Um, I'm just going to touch base on them with this surface right here. If I were to apply to the highlighted surface a Constant Z toolpath using a ball nose, we'll see that it basically will do a waterline cut along the surface, which means that it'll machine on this side, jump over, and machine on that side. If I were to do that using linear, basically it would do the same thing. It would zigzag back and forth as it goes along with some retraction motions as well. Now, that same surface, if we use the morph between curves, we'll see that we're actually generating a toolpath that follows those surfaces exactly. So that is the difference between the parallel cuts constant Z and the morph between boundary curves, which is just another one of the HSS toolpath. So let's take a look at how I actually programmed it to do that. So we'll start with geometry. In this case, it's not just the surface that's driving this toolpath, it's those two edges of the, of the, of the toolpath. So let me just go through them real quick. Show the surface. That is the surface that we're intending to machine. <clears throat> but we'd like to generate a toolpath that actually follows the flow of that. We tell it which direction to go to start with the start edge curve, which is the top side of that collection of surfaces. And the bottom side of that collection of surfaces is the end edge curve. Again, we're using a simple uh, 1 8 diameter ball nose. The levels, again, are the clearance plane, and we set the, the retraction distance and the uh, entry distance, similar to what you saw me describe in video 11 of the series for the HSS Express. Toolpath parameters, again, I'm just doing a 20,000 step over. And we'll skip ahead to links between slices. Again, I've set it to go to the clearance area if there were any links between slices or gaps along the cut. But in this case, it automatically knew to generate something that basically just flows between those two curves. And a gouge check, I didn't add any gouge check. So really the difference here with this particular strategy, morph between boundary curves, is all I'm doing is using, again, the surface to drive the toolpath, but the actual directions of the toolpath are being dictated by those two curves that I chose there. And you can see it morphs between them. And we'll actually see more of the morph between boundary curves as we go along in this video. Okay. The other strategies, perpendicular to curve, We'll see when we look at this feature right here, this little uh, bell shape, um, this surface is the, the surface that's selected. And I've actually chose as the curve to remain perpendicular to as the bottom edge there. And the programming behind that is essentially the same. All we're doing is under these strategies, choosing which type of geometry we'd like to control the toolpath. In this case, under geometry, I have the drive surface, which is the surface I'm intending the machine, and the lead curve, which is just that bottom curve there. And you see that the toolpath is perpendicular to that curve, meaning that along the surface, it's always going to remain 90 degrees to that, uh, to that curve. Likewise, we have parallel to curve. So for this same feature, if I check that box, we'll see that it remained parallel to that line as it goes across that surface. Now, this may look the same as uh, parallel cuts linear. And that is, again, because we're following that exact straight line. But as a parallel or perpendicular to curve toolpath, it will remain 90 degrees to that. So if I had chosen, let's say, one of these curved edges here, it would remain parallel to that as well. So the purpose of the morph between boundary curves, per perpendicular to curve, and parallel to curve is to use a line or a curve along the part to dictate the flow of the toolpath, which is very important in the finishing of some of these surfaces. Continuing along, if we take a look at a parallel cut constant Z for the main dish, you'll see that it actually still does a um, uh, constant Z cut, but there is a spiral nature to it. That is because in the full HSS under toolpath parameters, sorting, 
instead of one way and zigzag like you would see in the express package, we now have the option of spiral, meaning that there is a constant Z progression in this toolpath. And I've also told it to jump this gap, so it has actually entered from the top and spiraled down. And that's very useful, again, for the look of the finish on this, on this dish shape. Here we have the HSS projection. And what that does is projects another spiral toolpath on the surfaces that I've selected. In this case, it essentially drapes the toolpath on the surface. So you can see that it actually does that nice spiral, but it begins to drape it along the surface. So if we were to look at that from the top view, it looks like a perfect morphing out spiral toolpath. And again, I said we would take a look at the morph between boundary curves once again. Let's take a look at that as it applies to these corner fillets. It's very useful to use morph between boundary curves on fillets because what we'll do here is we're just gonna follow those fillets around and with our step over, go across the fillet. And you can see that that leaves a very nice finish there. Um, you get this sort of toolpath really only when, when you're using the morph between boundary curves. And again, that was programmed in a similar manner to what you saw in video 11. But under geometry, I chose as my surfaces all the corner fillets and as my top edge curve, basically the top edge of all those surfaces and the bottom edge of all those surfaces. And again, that morphs the toolpath exactly between those. So depending on your surface shape, orientation, however the surface looks, between each of these options, you'll have the ability to, to uh, lay a toolpath that follows the exact flow of the surface and leave a good finish. Again, it's a surfacing toolpath. We're looking for a good finish on this toolpath. If you have any other questions regarding this toolpath or any other toolpaths shown in any of our videos, you can call us back at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, or continue to watch the rest of the videos for the other toolpaths available from SolidCamp. Thanks for watching.